In this video, we're going to focus on how to create a model in Bootstrap 5. And models are things that I use very, very often. So let's start to explore how to do that. So I will do it in the most easiest way possible. And that's when we're going to get bootstrap.com. And we're getting the latest version as of now, 5.1. And if you scroll down here, you will see a lot of text, but eventually you get the starter template. And this is the one that we're going to use. So just click here on copy. And once you copy this, we can just paste this all in here. And there you are. Once we have that, we can just cut this out, put it in here. All right. So here we have a lot of extra comments. We can ignore all of this. We want to make sure we have the complete bootstrap bundle with poppers. Although we will not be using poppers at all. And there we are. All right. So what we're going to do here is basically create a model and, and I'm going to show you a model that I consistently use because it's quite nice and uh, it adds on on your site as well or basically it creates more space on your site without making it visible unless someone press on it. That's why models are extremely useful. So let's go back here and we can go here to components and if we go here to components I'm going to look here for the model. Uh, there we are. And in here, we can just basically ignore all of this. We just copy here this basic text here, but we will have the live demo version here. So I'm going to grab this one here. I'm going to cut this out. And we're going to put it in here nicely with a proper indentation. Save that. Ignore this. And refresh. All right. So there we are. We have this here now. And if I click on that, we get this nice model. And this model is fine, but one of the best models I have experienced right now is currently is the full screen model. And the full screen model will create like a second page on an existing page without making it visible. And that is extremely useful if you're going to use forms. So I'm going to create here a quick full screen model. We can probably find it here quickly. Go in here and then we look somewhere for the full screen. Uh, full screen. Oh, there we are. Select that. And the moment we click on that, you can see here all the options depending on the screen size. And I'll just get the default full screen. And where to place this, just to make sure the full screen model is basically placed in here in the model dash dialog. So if we go here to the model, model dash dialog, and then in here we just add up the full screen here. Then if we save this, refresh. And now we have this nice model here. And this is absolutely phenomenal, especially if you're going to combine it with a form. So let's add up a form in here. And I'm going to show you the form that I consistently use as well. It's very close to what we call the Google form style, which is very easy and user friendly design. So we're going here and we're going to create a form and we will be using the floating labels design. So we have these floating labels. We can just grab this here. And what we have to do, of course, eventually is here on the overview, we will see here the default structure where we have a form tag between here and eventually a submit, which is essential for if you want to validate your form. So let's start and create something very quick. So in here, we're going to put in some items. We're going to make sure that this is a form. There we have the form tag. And we have the closing form tag. And in between here, we have this. There we are. All right. So once we have this, we can do still a, or we can still add a submit button here. Let's copy this here. Paste this in here. And I tend to, if you have, depending on your color that you want, I prefer like this, the submit here. We have this, save that, refresh. And now if we select on that, we get like these options here. Oh, and I realize that this is basically redundant if you have these two here. However, this is one of the options here. Let's remove this one. I guess this should not be in here. We can save that like that. And there we are. So we have this here. And what I would even suggest here in this case, this is absolutely phenomenal, is basically to create a class here. Let's make this a row. And then in here, I'm going to create a div class and this div class will be a column and let's say column four or on small on the small screen will be four and if it's a mobile screen it will be full screen basically on these items so if i do this here now there we are and then of course what i would like to do here is 
repeat that nicely here put in here diff there we are and we could probably put in another one here just to make sure that you can see it here so we have the email and we, then let's add up another item here this could be username for example if this would be a login text and you will see here with the placeholders that the placeholder will not really matter indirectly but you can see here when we click on this this is basically based on the labels so this is the labels itself if I type in here the label you will see this here so this is responding based on the label but what happened if we remove the placeholder or basically we remove this here you will see it creates a different structure the floating label will not be able to understand that this is basically empty it sees it like there is a value in here so if I put in any kind of value in the placeholder and then I refresh here and this will show nicely if you remove this you will see as well that it has a slight difference there you are so this is basically the only thing that you have to consider with a floating input or basically a, fo a form floating we have the floating labels so with that we can just copy this one for now just put it in there and place this here all right and then we can just say here again user name or it doesn't even matter you can just say user just for for the sake of it because even if you put in here one two three it will not be recognized username save refresh there you are all right so with this and then eventually what we would like to do is to create a interactive version at the moment we select here on save changes it should trigger the form so that's what we're going to do in the next video